interesting particle-based effect. So what we're doing here is taking a 3D character and using it to generate this particle cloud. It's pretty simple to do, but it's quite an interesting effect. So let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is to grab a 3D character. And to do that, we are going to come to Mixamo.com. Now, even if you haven't got an Adobe subscription, you can sign up for free and still use this function. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select our animation. I'm going to select Capoeira here. So if I click on that, it's going to load it up onto the character. You can search for Capoeira if you want up here. And I'm actually going to come over to Characters and I'm going to search for a Ybot. And it gives us this guy. And let's just load him, use this character. So now once he's loaded, he is doing the dance. And then all we need to do is click on download and we need to save that out to wherever we're going to be saving our project to. And what that gives you is an FBX file. So unfortunately, the problem we have is that we can't import that FBX directly into Fusion because it won't bring in the animation data. And we're going to have to use something like Blender to convert it to an Alembic mesh, which will keep the animation data. Now, as I'm sure you know, Blender is completely free and well worth getting into. So even if you don't know anything about Blender, you should be able to follow along with this. So you'll get the splash screen and click on General, and you'll get something that looks like this. Then I want you to hit the A key, which selects everything in the scene. I want you to hit X and then Delete. And then all we need to do is come to File and Import, and we're going to import an FBX, obviously. We're going to come to our character, click on it and import it. So now if we press play on the timeline, you can see our little character there. So you'll notice we've only got 83 frames worth of animation and we'll have to set up a loop, but that's quite simply done. So down here at the bottom, you'll see this menu here. Currently it's set to timeline. We want to select graph editor Let's just drag this up a little bit. Then we need to click on this Modifiers tab here, and then Add Modifier, and we'll select Cycles. And you can probably see that the, the timeline updated, and now we've got a continuously looping animation. And we can now export this. So we're going to do File and Export and Alembic, this one here. And we're going to navigate to our folder, and we're going to export it as this Capoeira ABC. Don't need to worry about any of the options here, but I, what I will do is set my end value to 500. So we've got a nice long loop to play with and just export that. So then we want to open up Fusion. What we need to do is we need to bring in our Alembic. So let's add an Alembic mesh node here and then just navigate to where we've saved Capoeira Man. And let's have a look at him. There he is, dancing away. Just going to turn on 3D viewport lighting like that. Just so it looks a little bit better. And let's switch to the single viewer. And the nice thing about it is you'll notice he is standing on the floor, which is makes our life much easier. So let's now set up our particles. So I'm going to add a particle emitter like so. So I'm going to come to region and instead of the default of sphere, I'm going to switch to mesh and I'm going to have surface for the region type. And so now we can use our Alembic mesh as the input to the emitter. And then if we look at the emitter, we won't see anything, obviously, because we need a particle render node. And if we look at that, you can see vaguely that we've now got some particles here. I'm just going to come over to the style and I'm going to switch this to Engon and I'm going to use this one here. But really, you can experiment with any of those shapes. And for the size, I'm going to select 0 0.01. So let's come back to the emitter controls. I want 1200 for the number and for the lifespan I want 25 and for the lifespan variance I want 65 and 
you'll now see that we've kind of got the basis of our effect. So then what I'm going to do is after the emitter, I'm going to add a particle turbulence, bring that in here. And I'm going to set the strength to 1.5 for X, Y, and Z. And this is going to make the particles fly around once they've been generated. Now I want to limit the effect of the turbulence. And to do that, I can actually set up a region on the turbulence node. So come to region and when inside region and then for the region type we're going to select mesh and we can use now our alembic mesh as the input to the turbulence there it's a small difference but it is actually just going to make it a little bit more readable because the particles are not immediately going to be made turbulent while they're still inside the region of the original mesh. So that really is the effect. The only thing left to do now is to set up an interesting scene. So after this particle render node, let's add a 3D merge. Let's add in a new 3D shape. Let's set it to cylinder. Let's enable the top cap. Let's have a radius of 20, a height of 0 0.01. I should maybe increase those base subdivisions to 40 so it's a little bit more round. So now this is a floor for him to stand on. So then what I'm going to do is add a blin, add it to that shape there. I'm going to add a fast noise and I'm going to pipe it into the blin's specular intensity. I'm going to set this scale to something like 20 and the contrast up to maybe four. And over in the blin, let's set the diffuse color to an extremely dark gray like this. We're not seeing anything yet because we haven't got any lights. So actually let's add some lights now. I'm going to add a three point light. I'm going to come over and move it over on X to seven and Y 0.05 see already that's starting to light up the floor. So then let's add a 3D duplicate to this light and let's have six instances and come down to the rotation Y and set that to 60. And now if we look, we've got this ring of lights all the way around and we can start to see that texture on the floor. I'm just going to disable that grid because it's a little bit annoying there. You can see how that very simple setup has created this pretty interesting floor. So then let's actually add a little bit more. I want to add some little light bulbs. So I'm going to add a new 3D shape. I'm going to set this to sphere. I'm going to have 0 0.05 for the radius. Again, I'm going to set the transform seven on X and I'm going to copy this duplicate, paste it in after the 3D shape. And let's add this to the merge. And now if we zoom in, you'll see we've got these little light bulbs there where the lights are. Now we don't want these light bulbs to be lit by the light. So what we can do is come to the material and just turn off the lighting. And those will now be self-illuminated. So let's just group those, control G and call it lights. So I want to add some slightly more interesting geometry in here. So I'm going to add a new 3D shape. I'm going to use cube. Let's add this to our merge here. So I want to unlock the uniform scaling and I'm going to set the width to 4, the height to 1.5 and the depth to 8. And let's set up the subdivision. So subdivision width 20, subdivision height 1 and subdivision depth 20. Then I want to add a bender like this, switch to Z and let's have 0.1 for the amount. So this is going to create this interesting looking segment like that. And then we can duplicate that, add a 3D duplicate node. Let's have six instances. Let's come down to the Y rotation and set that to 60. And the other thing we need to do is come to the pivot and set that to 12 on the X. So now we've got this and we just need to move it over. If we now add a 3D transform and we can move it back into position by setting the X translation to negative 12. And it's gonna give this interesting sort of arena effect. And I just also want to move it up on Y by 0.75. And let's just do something with this shape material set its diffuse color again way down. So let's go for value of five, I think. And the specular 
let's reduce that intensity way, way down to something like, I don't know, 0.05 is probably going to be good. So then let's add a 3D camera. Now what I want to do here is I want to do what I normally do, come over to the transform. I want to add an expression to the Z pivot. So right click expression. I'm going to pick whip the Z translation and I'm just going to add a negative sign to the front of that. And it's going to make our life so much easier in terms of rotating the camera. So let's actually just add a 3D renderer after this merge and then let's set it to hardware renderer and let's also turn on lighting. So this is now the view through our renderer. I've made sure to set my scene range to 360 frames. What I'm also going to do just so we can see something is to take my limbic mesh and add it to the merge. Then I'm going to come back to my camera and let's set all of this up. So let's make sure we're on the first frame. Let's set the Y translation to two and the Z to 18 and let's keyframe both of those. And let's also set the X rotation to negative two and also keyframe that. Then what we're going to do is add an expression to the Y rotation, so add an expression there. So this is very simply going to be negative time. So we're going to rotate through 360 degrees during the course of the scene. Then I want to come to the last frame and I want to add a keyframe for the Y and Z translation and for that X rotation. And then I want to come to 180, which is the center of the scene. I want to set the Y translation to 1, the Z translation to 11, and this X rotation to negative 45. And so now basically we're going to be kind of rotating around, zooming in a little bit towards the center and looking down and then coming back around like that. And because of how we've set up this pivot, that's made it all a lot easier. So the only thing we need to do here is come to the spline for the camera, make sure we've got show only selected tool. And let's make ourselves some space. Let's just take our Y offset. So I've framed everything up, select the middle keyframe, shift S to add a smoothing keyframe there. Let's do the same thing with the Z offset, select that middle keyframe and shift S and the same thing with this X rotation. There it is, shift S, just smooth that off. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a background node and I'm going to take the renderer and pipe it over the background. So now if we come back to the beginning, look at our merge, and then I'm gonna take my renderer and I'm going to add a luma keyer to it, pipe the renderer out into the luma keyer. Let's have a quick look at the luma keyer. So we've just isolated the bright areas of our scene. Don't worry, this is going to be our particles eventually once we turn them back on again. For now, let's just set it up like this. Let's maybe just crunch down the black a little bit even more. And then let's also add a blur node after it. Let's set the blur size to something like 20. And then let's take the blur, merge it over the top of that other merge. Let's look at the result and let's turn the alpha gain down to zero. And then if we want, we can take our blur and we can add a color gain and we can just add a little bit of gain on the blue. Let's go for something like 1.5 and you can see we've now got a nice blue glow. So then we can come back and we can disable our character and we can turn back on the particles and we're done. So thanks very much indeed for watching, see you again soon.